Good morning, everyone. The Delaware County Commissioner meeting for uh, April 4th, uh, 2024 is now in session. Uh, would you stand and join me in the pledge? I'm going to ask Heidi, Heidi Kegley from the Superintendent of the Schools to come up and lead us. Please join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Superintendent. Uh, I'm Gary Merrill. I'm president of the board this year. And to my right is uh, Vice Chair uh, Barb Lewis. And to my left is Jeff Finn, fellow commissioner. And our administrator, Tracy Davis. And the deputy administrator, Don Houston. And Eric Hostev is in the audience, our other deputy administrator. And of course, our clerks. And I will ask that uh, let's begin. Item number one, resolution number 24-262 in the matter of approving the electronic record of the proceedings from regular meeting held April 1st, 2024 and special meeting held April 3rd, 2024. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? Vote. Vote on motion 24-262, Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. We do not have anyone for public comment today, so that moves us to item number three, resolution number 24-263, in the matter of approving purchase orders, then and now certificates and payment of warrants in batch numbers CMAPR0403, memo transfers in batch numbers MTAPR0403. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion, vote. Vote on motion 24-263, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Item number four, resolution number 24-264 in the matter of approving travel expense request. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion, vote. Vote on motion 24-264, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Now we have a retirement tribute to Frank Meredith. Good morning, Commissioners. Jeff Fischel, Director, Delaware County EMS. Um, today, uh, we brought Frank Meredith, paramedic Frank Meredith, to session uh, to be honored uh, in his retirement from Delaware County EMS. But before we do that, I'd like to go over just a couple things. Um, uh, I always find this kind of fun when somebody retires. We talk about the day that they walked into Delaware County EMS. And so the day that we, Frank started with us July 4, 2000. Uh, the day of the week was a Tuesday. The number one song in the United States was Be With You by Enrique Iglesias, which is not one I know, but I do know this next one. The number one song in the UK was The Real Slim Shady by Eminem. Uh, at that time, gas was $1.59. The temperature for that day was 84 degrees, and Frank started work at Delaware County EMS. Uh, however, uh, Frank became an EMT uh, back in 1985, um, which uh, subsequently is two years before I was born. Uh, <laughs> he became an advanced EMT in 2000, and he became a paramedic in uh, 2005, which coincidentally is also the year I graduated high school. So uh, in 2003, he renewed his uh, paramedic certificate with the state, his license, for the last time. Um, Frank has spent the majority of his career up at the Ashley Station. Uh, he had his uh, Day in the Bay or celebration uh, at the end of uh, last month. Um, something new we started doing uh, with our employees when they retire, and Frank was the first recipient of this, is we uh, took down the flag that flew over his station and put it into a kind of a shadow box for him with a certificate in it, um, honoring that, you know, the station that he served most of his time at, there's the flag that flew over it. So um, Frank's been a big part of this department. He used to, uh, to lead our um, uh, part of our supplies and cleaning uh, uh, supplies gathering program before that transitioned over to logistics. He's been a very positive uh, influence on those he's been around. He's, he's great to have a conversation with and just a genuine all around nice guy. Um, so he's in the audience today. I did tell him he had to come up and speak. Um, so, uh, Frank, do you know the Be With You Enrique Iglesias song? Or? Oh. <laughs> but if you'd like to come up, please. Uh. Yeah. Uh, 
Thank you for taking a moment out of your day to recognize my service to the community, and it has been quite a roller coaster. <laughs> and fortunately, I only occasionally ran into Dawn at Meyer or the uh, local brewery in Kilbourne or something <laughs> like that. Never spent any time in her office. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> But uh, Delaware County has been an awesome place to work with. I'll miss everyone. Well, I'll just take it. I don't know you personally. I've heard nothing but good about the job you do. And, and of course, uh, uh, Jeff's comments uh, reinforce all of that. And uh, your emotion I see on your face tells me a lot about your passion for our great county. and. Uh, Thank you for your great service. And I'm going to ask my fellow commissioners if they have any comments. Commissioner Lewis. I just yeah. wondered if you could recall some of those uh, times oh. on the roller coaster. <laughs> yeah, you didn't elaborate on that, did you? Did he? No. Oh. No. Probably the most recent was just the uh, ramp up for the uh, pandemic, you know, uh, before. Uh, my role switched over to the logistics and being able to kind of have that gut feeling to start stockpiling some things that my coworkers needed and kind of get ahead of the game and then the struggle to keep up and be responsible. Sure, sure, so. yeah, yeah. The well, rest, we probably don't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just want to thank you so much, so much. Frank, for your, for your service. And, you. and Ashley is a special place, too. Yeah. And so, you know, I mean, it's tucked in the northern part of the county. And, and yeah. uh, I, I'm sure that you are close, yeah. very close, are very close to the community. Uh, yes. Lots of folks that we've seen many times over the years. And... They recognize you when you stop in at the Dollar General <laughs> or something. <laughs> right, right. You know, uh, some very nice people. Yeah, well, that's so important. Yeah. You've saved yeah. lives. And, and lots of support from the local volunteers. I would be remiss in not oh, giving yeah. them the shout out for their camaraderie and support. Oh, thank you, okay. thank you. Commissioner Bishop. Yeah, uh, Frank, congratulations on your retirement. Um, served a long time and, yeah. and uh, hopefully you'll enjoy your, your retirement years. Um, I, I think, uh, again, your, your leadership, Jeff's leadership, a lot of the leadership team in the EMS uh, uh -huh. team is here. And uh, for those of you who haven't, yeah. aren't familiar with the history, um, in 2020, uh, our EMS division got the state EMS system yes. of the year. And as if that wasn't enough, in 22, we got the national EMS system yeah. of the year, you know, which yeah. is just an incredible accomplishment and tribute yeah. to the, to you, Frank, and the yeah. whole leadership team. Just, you know, so enjoy your retirement yeah. years. I yes. will, and before long, my longtime partner, 16 years, Julie Webb, will soon have her day up here. <laughs> is, is there anyone else that would like to speak? Yeah. I tried. <laughs> I, I, I take that as a no. <laughs> uh, two other things I would point out is. Uh, you mentioned the National Award. Frank uh, actually got to go down uh, to Florida and be part of that oh, group that um, accepted the award on the behalf of the county. And something that's always kind of unique. How many stations were there in the county when you started? EMS stations. We had just opened six, seven, and eight. So, so yeah. five official full time. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. So you've seen a lot of growth in your time. Yeah. Well, again, thank you very much for your thank service. You. Enjoy your retirement. I hope I don't, I'm sure you got plans to travel or whatever your hobbies are. Yes. So, <laughs> and we'd like to get a photo uh, of you with your with the proclamation we've done for you. Okay. Yeah.
resolution number 24-265 in the matter of authorizing registration for and submission of an application to the One Ohio Recovery Foundation for a 2024 regional grant. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. So in 2018, the board decided to, oh, Eric Stetler, general counsel. In 2018, the board decided to join the opioid litigation and uh, in 2022, uh, the One Ohio Recovery Foundation was uh, initiated to accept some of those settlement monies from that litigation. And it's been those two years in the making to where the Ohio, uh, One Ohio Recovery Foundation has finally put out an RFP to start accepting applications for grants from the state uh, for eligible programs for opioid abatement activities. Our county working group has been discussing potential projects for the county to, uh, to undertake, and we have settled on one program in particular, and I'll allow Director Fischel to go through the details of that, but what we're looking to do is start this at a county level and seek funds from the foundation to help support the costs of phase one and maybe even into the future, um, and I'll let uh, Director Fischel provide a little more detail about that program. Okay. Okay. Oh, he's a lot taller than me. <laughs> he's a lot taller than most people. <laughs> Except not today. He's not taller than some of the others. Uh, hit me in the forehead. Uh, good morning, Commissioners. Director, uh, Jeff Fischel, Director of Delaware County EMS. Uh, just to provide some uh, background on the uh, program that uh, uh, Deputy Administrator Eric Holtzettler is referring to is uh, it's called the CREW and it stands for Community Resource Unit. It is a, uh, a vehicle, an SUV that uh, would respond uh, throughout the county with a paramedic and a service coordinator and the primary goal of this uh, vehicle would be to respond to uh, opioid addiction related incidents and uh, mental health, uh, behavioral health related incidents. Um, it's kind of a twofold. Uh, it's it's about getting the right resource to the right call and uh, limiting or uh, reducing uh, the amount of reoccurrences of uh, people uh, in these situations uh, utilizing the emergency response system or uh, uh, being stuck in an emergency room waiting for treatment at a mental health facility. <laughs> so um, it's a program that we've been working on for uh, quite a while now. Uh, we've been seeking a lot of input from uh, community partners uh, there, we have a really good foundation and a core as to what this would look like, and I think we are ready to, um, if approved, uh, launch and adopt this uh, program and, uh, soon. But I'm here to answer any questions that might be about it. I know I sent out the document uh, that details it. That's the same document that I sent out to all the fire chiefs, police chiefs uh, around the county. Um, I've got some feedback. Uh, on that last document from uh, one of the one of the fire chiefs and but I'm here to answer any questions you might have is there support throughout the county of the fire chiefs etc uh, I would say that I would say there's support for it um, and the support ranges from uh, we absolutely support it to uh, I have more questions um, but I don't I wouldn't say that anybody is outright opposing of it. Um, it's more along the lines of this is new. Need more information. What, you know, I want to know more about it type of thing. Okay. Yeah. Other questions or comments? Yes, um, I have one. I remember uh, being in a meeting a couple of years ago with stepping up, and this was identified, the lack of, of help when, when people overdosed or those with mental health challenges they would go to the emergency room, but then there really wasn't any. They could only treat certain things, and then the person was released. And so there was no real follow-up. And this is something that is uh, very important, and it's so important that we fill this gap. And so I applaud you for coming up with, with a way to do that. Yeah, and you mentioned stepping up. Uh, Cassie Neff has actually been one of the individuals that uh, Sheriff Balzer has uh, placed on oh, um, to provide feedback and she's very supportive. Sheriff Balzer has been very supportive of the program and so she's been great to receive feedback from and uh, her encouragement and talking about statistically following up with individuals of an overdose or in mm -hmm. trying to guide them in the treatment uh, after okay. the event, uh, they're much more likely to actually, actually accept help and go through the treatment. Right. 
Exactly. No, it's it's great. It's thank you. Okay. Thank you. Call the vote. Vote on motion 24 265. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Item number seven, resolution number 24 266, in the matter of authorizing the distribution of solar eclipse viewing glasses to members of the general public. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? I believe Don's going to add since the absence of change. Yes, good morning, Commissioners. Don Houston, Deputy Administrator. And this resolution would authorize the EMS Department to distribute the extra eclipse glasses at this Friday's first Friday um, to the general public. So we would appreciate your support of the resolution and recommend moving that forward. And I just want to reemphasize, we've heard over and over, but I had someone uh, the other day had walling glasses and they thought those would be good enough and <laughs> they Googled and found out one kind is, one kind isn't. So mm -hmm. please make sure you have the proper precautions so you don't affect your eyesight next week. So I just want to read a statement we've all heard and reinforce it. And I'm sure everybody in the room has heard that, but uh, it's very important. Uh, and uh, with that, I will call for a vote. Vote on motion 24-266, Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Item number eight, resolution number 24-267. In the matter of recognizing and celebrating the Delaware Hayes High School boys basketball team for their extraordinary season. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion, but I'm going to turn the program over to Commissioner Ben. He's the one that suggested that we get the team here, and uh, obviously the other two commissioners quickly agreed. Uh, so I think it's appropriate that you uh, begin the conversation. Well, thank you, uh, Commissioner Merrill, and, and it is a great honor for, for me to, uh, to present this award. Uh, along with my fellow commissioners, but um, I'm, I'm a proud Hayes alumni, and we have some other alumnus, alumni in the audience as well. Donna Meyer, from also a fellow class of 71 um, uh, alumni member, and uh, Bill Oberfield, class of 72. And then uh, we have uh, Brent Carson, who is uh, Mr. Delaware. <laughs> and he, uh, he's, he's, uh, he's so knowledgeable about the history of Delaware, and I know he was a big supporter of the team and the success you guys had. But uh, before, I, I know Brent wanted to say some words, and we certainly welcome him. I also wanted to just recognize uh, Superintendent Kegley uh, for her support and, and helping to, to uh, bring you guys here to, so that we could recognize you. And, uh, what, a, what an incredible season. Um, you know, when I was in, in school, we had really good teams, but we came nowhere near going to the state. Um, and you guys did it, and you came within one point of, uh, you know, going to the finals, and I think you would have won the finals. You know, it's just, uh, so again, great, great teamwork, great representation of Hayes and the whole community. So, you know, we're just really proud of what you guys accomplished and how you accomplished it. And, um, so we do have, uh, we do have a, um, a resolution that uh, Commissioner Merrill will read, but uh, I don't know, Brand, if you wanted to say a few words, or anybody else, is the coach here? Yeah. Oh, the coach. <laughs> yeah, you got to come yeah. up. Yeah. yeah, Come on. Give us your name. And um, Adam Vincenzo. Um, so it's uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you for for having us. Um, you know we're we take representing the city of Delaware and Delaware County proudly, um, and, and we strive to do that. You know every time we're together. Um, Mr. Carson, correct me if I'm wrong. We were the fourth team to make it from Delaware County at the state level yes. in the history of the county. Um, so you know obviously pretty special for our county. Um, you know it's you know a lot of times. You know the Franklin County schools get a lot of publicity, and um, you know for us to be representing our county is 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 a big deal. But um, the thing I'm just most proud of with these guys is it's just a, a pleasure to work with them every single day. Um, every single one of them made a sacrifice of some sort to, you know, put us in a position that we were in, and you know that's not easy for you know teenagers to come together like like that. And our culture is is very sacred to us. Um, internally in our locker room and, and all these young men buy into that and understand what we're all about but what was special was 
I think a lot of outsiders got to see from our community exactly who we are, how we represent ourselves, and um, you know who we, who we are to be Delaware Hayes Pacers. So, um, you know, thank you again for for honoring us and, and having us here, and we appreciate all the all the love and support. So, sure. Thank sure. you. Thank you. Before we go to Brent, yeah. Superintendent, you want to say anything? Oh no, yeah. I would like this all to be about the team. Ex oh. <laughs> <laughs> I would be remiss, though, if I did not recognize the incredible work of this team and the support that they felt from the community, as Coach Vincenzo shared. It, it really brought out the best in Delaware County and Delaware City and showed that true partnership and collaboration that we've always had. But this team allowed us to showcase that. And I will be forever grateful to the coaching staff and the team for what they have done for our community. My daughter and my two grandkids attend Delaware schools. And uh, they were over there. Unfortunately, I was in Oklahoma City uh, watching my favorite, second favorite sport, softball, women's softball. And uh, uh, so I couldn't be there, but I got the report very quickly how well they did. And uh, with that, Brent, uh, once you come up and make your comments. Now, what you will hear over the years, Brent is you, the treasure trove of historical information about this county. You will now be part of that history when he tells the stories about right. sports in our That's great right. county. Thank you for letting me be here. And, and uh, I, I know that all three of you know that for many years I've traveled to all around the county talking to different groups of all ages, every quarter of the county, and, and that, uh, that as a teacher all those years, and, uh, and all those wonderful times of standing up, talking in front of classes, and I never had any trouble talking. You're a little emotional today. So. <laughs> I'm sorry? You're a little emotional today. Well, that says a lot about what you're Well, I can tell about. you that this is entirely different. This is very difficult to stand up here right now. And uh, I want to say that I'm a... Uh, that being up here, uh, I'm only here as a as a fan of a small town and what it's like. A little bit about what it's like from the standpoint of a fan being there in those stands. I can tell you that uh, that being up there. Uh, Three things that I can say about this team. Two of them are, uh, are things that I've never seen. And one is something I have seen. And I, I'm not going to talk anything at all about their championship or anything like that. Two things I've never seen. One, I never saw one student on this team over at the bench or out on the court who was so angry that they lost their emotions and lost control. Another one I never saw is I never saw one player at any time in those years, I never saw one of them uh, deride another player on another the team. Uh, the one thing that I did see is as a fan, I like to get to ball games early. <laughs> and I like to see all three teams play, the freshmen, the reserves, and the varsity. And, uh, and seeing those, the fans start to filter into a gym. And then they go up there and they take their seats. And uh, the game begins. And then partway, it seems like through the freshman game or something, the varsity, their players start to arrive. And you notice this, that uh, how they react to their fellow students out there in the stands or out there, and, uh, and how they then start making their way up into the stands to see families and that kind of thing. And, and I noticed, too, that uh, just myself being a fan of, uh, they oftentimes will come over and say something to me or say something to some other fan out there and how open and all that they are and, and just being around people. And that, 
those kind of things that I've just said come from three things. One, their families, the parents. It's obvious that they, uh, from a young age, have taught them how to be around people and how to react to people. And I've seen that. And another group are these coaches out here and the atmosphere around their team and how uh, what expectations they make of their players and uh, on and off the court. And it's just, uh, uh, that's wonderful. And then of course, the third group is just the players themselves and how they act. But uh, it's just been a wonderful thing and, and I can say this, that you know that we're an exploding uh, county of people and that uh, all those tens of thousands of people around this county you will not find if you went out into the county you won't find a finer group of people than these people sitting behind me right now this is the finest group of people that you'd ever find and I'm just so proud to have been able to have been around them. I look at those faces, they're just proud. And uh, I think I'd better stay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Commissioner Lewis, do you have anything you want to add? <laughs> or dad, dad, dad. Uh, I don't think so. No, I, I guess I was wondering family? What does. Does somebody yeah, the, want to explain that? Yeah, I was going to ask that shirts. question. Uh, is there a captain that would like to maybe come up and share with us what family means? And, uh, <laughs> oh, there you go. There. Thank this you. Is, this is not planned, so uh, <laughs> no, this catch you both yeah. Yeah. Give okay. us your name. Uh, my name is Jesse Burris. I'm a senior. Um, played four years, all that kind of stuff. But um, family has been something we talked about since I was there as a freshman. Um, it's kind of what our head coach, since he took over, is kind of – built into us um, and it just kind of means that we're all together inside of basketball, inside of the school, outside, everything. We all cherish each other's time and uh, presence and everything like that. So we're very appreciative of each other. So that's kind of what family means. Oh, wow. Okay, congrats. Wow. Is, is there anyone Jesse, else for the Jesse, players you'd like to speak? Jesse, you're, you're going to OU, right? I am, yes. You're going to start in the fall, yep. start school. No, no, well, congratulations and good luck. Thank good you. luck. Anyone else like yeah. to speak yeah, to the I player? Yeah, there is on somebody. On. Well, don't be try. bashful. Come on. Family members, <laughs> other on. coaches. Yeah. All right. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. I'm Carter Sims. I'm a senior. Um, so family is its kind of part of a bigger um, kind of ideas that we have for our program. So we have four pillars, um, family, trust, humility, and perseverance. And um, those all mean kind of different things to each person. But... Um, it's really the values that we have for our program and the people in it and um, just kind of it's really the rubric for our actions and thoughts and um, just how we operate when we're together so um, family is kind of one of our bigger ones because that's obviously you know basketball is a team sport but um, I think this team kind of takes it beyond just being a team where you know we're with each other all the time like kind of like Jesse said off the court on the court in school whenever um, we always have each other's back, so we want to make that kind of present when we're together and um, show what we're about when we're wearing stuff like that. So um, we do that when we have our T-shirts, but also by our actions together. And um, it's really just about displaying our values of the culture when you know we're out in the public and stuff. I missed your name, uh, Carter Sims. I'm Carter. Carter. Uh, are you a junior, senior, senior? Senior. Senior. Okay. Well, congratulations and thank you. Yeah. Anyone else? Yeah. Carter, where, where are They keep you? looking back in the corner back there, so I'm not <laughs> sure who that is, but they obviously want that person to speak. There we go. There ah, we go. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Hello. Okay. Um, Give us your name. My name is Jake Loman. I'm a senior at Delaware. And uh, family, um, I think it's even more than that. You know, it, it means so much. Uh, every day after school, we come to practice, and these guys always have my back. Whether I had a bad day at school or something's going on at home, I know I can always count on these guys. And uh, I think we don't really tell each other that we love each other enough because we're um, 
you know, young men, we're not great with feelings, but uh, <laughs> I, I truly do love these guys, and uh, they're my brothers for life. So, thank you. Well, in your statement, it says a lot about you. It says a lot about the team. Oh, it says a lot about the school. So, uh, I think that's well said. Yep. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Is there anyone else before I read the proclamation? Again, we're very honored that you're with us today, because I know you'd rather be in class. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, I'm going to read the proclamation. Whereas the Delaware County Commissioners have the responsibility to recognize occasions of outstanding significance and the exemplary achievements of its residents, and whereas the Delaware High Hayes High School Boys basketball team brought honor and distinction to the community with their exceptional performance and sportsmanship, throughout the 2023-2024 season and during the Ohio High School Athletic Association State Championship Tournament. And whereas, following an exciting season-long journey, they concluded with a remarkable 21-game winning streak, the Pacers secured a spot in the state tournament for the first time in program history and went on to compete in the Division Final Four. And whereas, the team's dedication, skill, and perseverance also allowed them to secure the program's first district title since 1986 and its first regional championship. And whereas, as a result of the state tournament birth, the Delaware County community united in rallying behind the team with the same fervor and energy exhibited by these students, athletes, all season on the court. Therefore, be it resolved that the Delaware County Board of Commissioners does hereby recognize and celebrate the Delaware Hayes High School boys basketball team for their extraordinary season and for exemplifying the best of our community's spirit and values at the state tournament, which you also did today. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we need to get a photograph. And, uh, huh? We need to vote. We can vote, vote first. Vote. Yeah, we're going to. All right. Let's vote. Better vote. Vote on motion 24-267, Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Everybody come up. Squeeze it in. Thank you, Brett. Thank you so much. Resolution number 24-268 in the matter of accepting a donation from the Columbus Foundation in support of the Delaware County Dog Shelter. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Don Houston again. Um, we are very fortunate to receive support from the Columbus Foundation for the um, veterinary care of the dogs in the dog shelter. 
Um, they are giving us, again, um, funds for that purpose, and this year it's $8,000. Um, since 2021, they have given us a total of 28,000. Um, so this will bring us to 36,000, right? <laughs> since um, 2021. So oh, very, very thankful for um, their support of, of the dogs in Delaware County. That's always appreciated. And just a question, did we send a letter of thanks? Yes. Okay, great. Absolutely. If we, could we show it, I'm glad to Yes, our that. dog warden, Mitch Garrett, is in very close contact with the Columbus Foundation. Oh, so. that's great. Yes. Any other you. questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion 24-268, Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Bitten. Aye. Resolution number 24-269 in the matter of supporting the Ohio Commission for the United States Semi-Quincentennial America 250. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? Donna. Donna, are you speaking? Anything or? or Chris? Yeah. Chris is here today too. Chris is gonna be part of this, this celebration. <coughs> it's a great day to be a pacer, huh, Donna? No kidding. As, as you mentioned, we did have a good we did have good sports teams, but nothing to this yeah, measure. We, yeah, we wow. had really good teams, but they didn't come close to the state. Um, I've got packets to hand out. Oh, awesome! Thank you. So everybody say semi quincentennial no. oh gosh <laughs> i think they dropped that and they just call it america 250 which is That's, a whole lot easier yeah. to say thank yeah. you so we decided to take the lead on this effort in delaware county um and if you look at the booklet you could see some of the things that we have planned and we've got a couple years to plan it so we do have representatives from all over the county from radnor harlem powell sunbury Ashley, so we've got a good group and we certainly welcome other people to participate in this. Um, if you look on the third page, you see a grave marker uh, recognizing William Warrington, who uh, was a Revolutionary War soldier and he was an aide to George Washington and he actually intercepted some poison that was meant for George Washington, oh, so basically geez. he saved his life. He's buried over at Mill Creek, so he would certainly be someone that we would recognize. Um, last summer, we did a driving tour. I think, Jeff, you were part of that yeah, the cemetery. Yeah, I saw that grave. That was, that was remarkable. Yeah, it was I, neat. I wouldn't, didn't know that story. Mm. A lot of people don't know the story, but when we're done, they will. <laughs> so we would do a driving tour and just select a few Revolutionary War soldiers, possibly have reenactments, and have people drive around to the cemetery and learn more about these. I've been working with Brian Gallagher here at the Veterans Services to be sure that we get as many markers to recognize these soldiers as possible. Um, we're also going to talk about our native population. People think, you know, in 1776 there was no Delaware County. Well, there was no Delaware County. However, there were people who lived here. Those were our Native Americans. And uh, Pluggy Sound, which is over at Mingo Park, um, it was very large. We had a number of tribes that were here. And at the peak, it held at least 600 residents, which is remarkable. We also talked about renting signage of the Declaration of Independence and putting it right out here in front of the courthouse. So we'll right. be in touch for that. We're also going to talk about our immigrants, where they came from, and uh, we have someone who's going to create videos. Um, and we're going to do a series of programs that we nor uh, normally do um, monthly programs, but this will include information about 1776. We'll do exhibits. Um, we're going to really promote our agricultural heritage which a lot of our ancestors that came here to Delaware County, that's what they did, they, they farmed. The exhibits will be at the historic jail, the Meeker Homestead Museum, and at various locations, and it will also be a feature of our table at First Fridays. I appreciate the support of the commissioners. Great. Mm -hmm. All right. Chris? Yes. <laughs> Chris is gonna play a role that maybe you can. You need to come up here, Mr. Yeah, come on up to this. <laughs> Chris Shaw, Records Coordinator for Delaware County. I'm going to be the liaison between the 250 committee and Donna and the county. So uh, we'll, I'll work closely with Donna to make sure um, everything moves as smooth as possible. 
all the records and yeah, <laughs> that she needs. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Gosh. Th thank you. This is very exciting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, do you have anything else? Or? I didn't have anything else. Do you have any, any questions? Question. No, any questions just, or comments? I, it's great that we're planning a couple years out. Mm -hmm. That's really neat. It should be a lot of fun. So I uh, have thanks for your role in this. I have announced my retirement to the board at the end of 2026. <laughs> That's probably It'll come good. just in time. Yeah. We appreciate well, the support of the commissioners. And keep us posted as you I will. will. Well, the yeah. history is so important and, mm -hmm. and uh, boy, needs to get out there so people do have an understanding of, of uh, our ancestry here and what happened. I mean, uh, so. Thank you. Well, it's we really we really need to get that out there and mm -hmm. and uh, fill that gap. Well, Jeff and I rival each other on how long our ancestors have been here. I think we're both seventh generation. Seven my family settled here in 1810. So oh, that's my pretty gosh. cool. Yeah. Yep. We go way back. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Let's proceed. Okay. Do we need a vote on that, or do we already vote? We need a vote. Yes. Oh. oh okay. Vote on motion 24-269, Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Thank, thank okay. you very much. Thanks, Donna. Well, Thanks, thank, you. thank you. Uh, we do have, did, did we want to get a photo? Or, uh, Donna we, wanted a photo because she has to do a newsletter this afternoon. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh. So she had to be in charge of her phone. Let's do it. <laughs> sure. That's scary. Yeah. <laughs> Continue. Resolution number 24-270 in the matter of approving a temporary construction easement for sanitary sewer purposes to the Community Improvement Corporation of Delaware, Ohio. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion. Good morning, Commissioners. Tiffany Mag, Director of Environmental Services. So this is a temporary easement for the developers of the, the Redwood Powell site to get across a county-owned property with a, a temporary construction easement. The sewer is right across the road from this property. Questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion 24-270. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. Mr. Mayoral. Aye. Resolution number 24-271 in the matter of approving the Sanitary Sewer Subdividers Agreement for Redwood Powell Home Road Phase 1. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? So this is that same project for Redwood Powell. Uh, as part of the project, they're going to be installing a little over 3,400 feet of 16-inch force main that we need uh, at the county to eventually be able to redirect our Gulf Village pump station off of the Leather Lips tributary area over to the home road trunk sewer that the county engineer is going to be installing with the road widening project. So this is really important for us. Uh, we're giving them tap credits for that portion for a total of $882,450.10. Questions or comments? I'm Both? glad you got that oh, 10, 10 cents <laughs> in. <That's laughs> right. Yeah. Thanks. You good? I'm good. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Cover vote. Yeah. Vote on motion 24-271. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Resolution number 24-272 in the matter of approving a professional services agreement with Prime Construction Management and survey for on-call construction inspection services. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Discussion? So this is for the uh, residential construction um, inspection that we do. This is a $200,000 contract that will get us through 2024 and a portion of 2025 as well. And once again, these are those developer reimbursed costs through their inspection fees. Questions or comments? Vote. Vote on motion 24-272, Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. We now have the monthly sanitary approval update. Thanks. Okay, so we have a handful of. It's going to be on the 
Whoa, it's going no, on his mouth. Yeah, not on this. <coughs> All right. This thing has a mind of its own. <laughs> okay, so first of all, we had a, a plan approval in Berlin Farms West for Berlin Farms Section 4. Uh, this is up at the top here, the, the pink one. It's uh, the formal, former Long Hill site. It is, uh, let's make this mouse to work, 28 single family lots in this section um, off of Rollis and Pyatt Road, uh, north, north of Berlin Station Road. So section four is a plan approval. We also have down at the bottom, section one is uh, sewer acceptances. So they're, they're moving pretty quickly through, through those phases. It's an MI project. Uh, there are 52 lots in section one. Then we have Slate Ridge Commercial, which is um, just off of Home Road, on the south side of Home Road. This is a Kerbler project. There's actually two separate projects, the Slate Ridge as well as uh, the Graphics Way project are both sewer extensions with no current plans for what's gonna go on those lots, but um, anticipated commercial development uh, through uh, those Kerbler tracks. And then we have North Star Presswick Road, phase one and two. This was on session a couple weeks ago when I was in to break out the sections. Uh, so this is that agreement for phase one. And then same thing with Clarkshall Crossing. This was also on session uh, a couple weeks ago uh, for phase A and B of section one. Um, this, is, this was where we had the tap credits for that 18 inch that would go up through those. The it's uh, just east of Sawmill Parkway, north of Home Road. Um, allows us to get that sewer extension to the north that eventually will be able to open up that tributary area to the north to flow into this 18 inch sewer. And then finally, uh, Evans Farm Section 6. Uh, this is uh, you know, basically just the next phase um, of that Evans Farm development. 97 single family lots. Um, if you know where kind of that main drag is, it's just off to the west of, of where their um, development is currently. So, with that, I'll take any questions. Questions or comments? Yeah, appreciate uh, the update. Throw a report as you always do. Yeah. Great, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Proceed. We also have a presentation from Mid Ohio Regional Planning Commission. <coughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, All right, good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm, Maria, I'm, I'm Maria Schaffer. I'm the Associate Director of Transportation Planning with the Mid-Ohio Regional Planning Commission. And I think I have some hard acts to follow, but um, if anything, I think it, um, the basketball team you know, emphasizes the importance of uh, looking out to the future and uh, planning for the so future. So I take it's your first time here, because downstairs you didn't know where to go, so it's first time here? Yes, yeah, and it's a, a beautiful building. I'm happy to be here, so thank you for your time, and um, happy to talk about transportation this morning. We're glad you're here. Go proceed. All right, so I'm just going to talk through the, the slides and the handout, so if in case you're um, just to remind you about MORPSI, uh, we are the regional council for the central Ohio area. We um, ha provide services for uh, over 85 local governments, including rural, suburban, and urban communities. And uh, we really uh, bring local communities together and uh, on coordination around transportation infrastructure, uh, economic development, uh, planning and sustainability, data, research and mapping, as well as policy and grant development. And ultimately, we're try we want to um, coordinate as a region and drive investment into our region. And so um, why, why am I here today to talk about the Metropolitan Transportation Plan? I know this is not news to you, but our region is growing. Uh, we are expecting to be a region of, of uh, 3.15 million people in the 15 counties uh, by 2050. And so, you know, what does that look like? Um, you know, that's 726,000 more people by 2050 and 357,000 more jobs by 2050. And um, as you can imagine, that will create um, new demands on our transportation system. And while um, we, we can't stop the growth, uh, we can uh, be prepared for it. And so uh, that's uh, part of that is this Metropolitan Transportation Plan. Um, you have a, a map, okay, oh, you do have it on your screen. Um, so the maps here show um, 
this is where we are expecting growth in the future. Um, these, uh, these maps are based on local land use plans. So this is not a you know, this is not Morpsy saying, you know, where, where growth is going to occur. This is, you know, our team looking at all of the uh, existing local land use policies and where our local communities are planning for growth, allowing growth, and so, I mean, how that translates into growth in the future. So on the left-hand side, that shows um, that change in growth. So between 2021 and 2050, those darker colors are the areas we expect to experience the highest amount of growth. So you will see Delaware County uh, has quite a few dark colors in there. Um, and uh, on the right-hand side, that's the total 2050. So overall, and to, you know, that's um, existing plus you know, that left map added on. So overall, what um, the, the highest uh, population and household areas in 2050. And then the, the next map shows the set of maps shows the employment projection, so where we expect the most employees to be located. And similarly, you know, on the left hand side, that shows the increment of change, so where we expect the uh, highest amount of growth to occur between 2021 and 2050. And then on the right hand side, you'll see the overall uh, uh, total employment that we're expecting in 2050, where it's located. So you notice you know, in this map, a lot of the major transportation corridors is where we're expecting a lot of the employment growth to happen. But again, just emphasizing why we need to plan for transportation. And um, this is a, an input into our process, understanding where people are gonna be living and working in the future. So what is the Metropolitan Transportation Plan? It is a long range plan that identifies regional strategies and projects. Uh, we update this plan every four years and submit it to USDOT and ODOT. Um, as the Metropolitan Planning Organization for uh, Central Ohio, we are required to submit this to USDOT every four years. But uh, more importantly, USDOT really looks at this plan as the guiding document for federal transportation investments. And um, what that really means is for a project to be eligible for federal transportation dollars, it must be identified in this plan. Because USDOT really looks at this as kind of the regional consensus of um, you know, our, our priorities for the region. And so I'm here today to kind of talk to you about our process for uh, developing this plan and um, just let you know we are, um, you know, we're, we're nearing the final stages, we're nearing um, adoption, so we want to uh, make a final call for um, in feedback um, and give you a chance to have a look at what we are showing in Delaware County and, um, yeah, and how, you can, how, how you can be involved. So um, again, the, it, it's important, I think I already covered this next slide, you know, our demographics are changing as we grow, development is changing, and again, you know, we want to really make sure our region is eligible for federal transportation investments. Um, on, on this page, you see our, the six guiding goals that we developed the plan around. Um, you know, as, as we um, identify projects and strategies, we really want to point back to these six ideas of um, you know, how are we, um, for our region, creating sustainable neighborhoods? How are we positioning Central Ohio to attract and retain economic opportunity? We want to protect our natural resources. We want to increase regional collaboration provide transportation and mobility options to benefit the health, safety, and welfare of all people, and we want to reduce per capita energy consumption. And so as we move through this process, that's what we're um, ultimately trying to advance. And so this slide here kind of shows the, the process that we go through to develop the plan. Again, we start with those goals and objectives. We also start by looking at local plans that we have in place. So um, local, state, and regional plans to identify projects that have already been identified by local communities as a priority. They've been through a planning process. And we collect all of those projects at a starting point. And then, of course, data. You know, we're looking at the population and employment forecasts. We're looking at you know, plugging that into um, a travel demand model to uh, understand how that um, impacts travel demand. We, um, we're doing a fiscal analysis. So uh, this is a fiscally constrained plan, meaning that the projects identified, although not, they don't have not all of them have funding currently committed to them, we, do, we did develop cost estimates and we developed a revenue forecast. So uh, we wanted to estimate about how much state, federal, and local dollars we can expect uh, in our region out to 2050. And so we really wanted to balance those out. So we didn't, we can't include any projects in the plan that we don't think we'll be able to afford and actually build by 2050. And then we do an impact, do impact analyses. So how are the projects that we're recommending to be included? How do they impact air quality? How do they impact the environment as well as transportation disadvantaged populations? And so what that all, that all boils down to 
um, a set of regional strategies and projects that are recommended and we document that into um, a plan. So that's what most people are, are interested in. And so um, the draft strategies, there's about 78 strategies that are included in the draft plan. I'm not going to read them all today, but they are uh, viewable on our website. you have got the website there at the bottom of this slide. But they all fall into um, one of two categories. So how are we managing our existing transportation system? How are we preserving it and maintaining it? How are we uh, making it more efficient through um, intelligent transportation systems and technology? Um, how are we managing the demand for the transportation system by um, so um, looking at strategies such as um, providing you know multi uh, multiple modes and encouraging um, non single occupancy vehicle use and then um, safety and security so how are we making the, the system safer uh, and then as I mentioned the other category we are a growing region we're going to have to expand our transportation <coughs> system as well so we um, have system development strategies that include the infrastructure projects that include uh, bike and pedestrian projects transit projects um, freight and multimodal connections as well as roadway projects and uh, I have a couple maps in, in this in the slide deck but there is a, an interactive web map available on our website that you can visit and you can kind of zoom in to different areas pan around you can click on specific projects to get more information about them <clears throat> but it does <clears throat> if you look at this next slide you know this that map is not meant to be read uh, um, on this slide but it's meant to show the magnitude of how many projects we have identified in the region and it does total about 35 billion dollars worth of projects and <clears throat> you'll see the pie chart kind of breaks down um, these projects that we've um, identified as priorities by project type um, you'll see that a large chunk of that um, is um, in, in within the transit category. So it's about $13 billion that we expect to invest in transit. Um, that includes um, some uh, high capacity fixed route transit in Franklin, in the Franklin County area um, that is consistent with the CODA uh, link, link Us CODA initiative. Um, and then that also includes, um, we expect about a 45% increase in um, expansion of existing transit services that includes the existing CODA bus routes as well as what Delaware County Transit and we would expect some investment into those services um, between now and 2050. We don't specifically map those because when we're looking out at such a long range at this regional level um, you know bus routes can kind of change and um, at a in a shorter time frame so we identify the the funding um, needed but not necessarily the specific investments. Um, <clears throat> the other big part of piece of that pie is management and operation. So, you know, typically, you know, we see about eight, you know, we're looking at about $8.4 billion uh, between now and 2050 just to maintain the, the system we have. And so you'll see other categories. We've got um, about $2.7 billion identified for freeway projects, um, $4.5 billion identified for major widenings of arterial or surface streets or new roadways, and about $1.8 billion for uh, what we call standalone bike and pedestrian projects. Um, one thing I should also note is that any roadway project we've identified here, uh, we would assume that um, bike and the appropriate bike and pedestrian components would be included in those roadway projects as well, but we, we don't call them out separately. Um, and so if you want to go to the next slide, um, this, this shows the draft transit projects. I know it is more focused on Franklin County be, uh, due to, again, CODA has a um, partnering with MORPC and the City of Columbus, a, an initiative to bring um, high capacity transit to the region. That's what you'll see on those um, dark purple lines. There's three corridors for bus rapid transit actually in design. Right now, um, we would expect that um, two more corridors to be built of high capacity bus rapid transit by 2050. That's what those purple swaths indi indicate, I'm sorry. That includes a connection from downtown to the airport, as well as downtown to the southern part of our region. Um, the pink lines indicate um, additional transit improvements on corridors, but not quite to the level of high capacity transit. And then I think what you all will probably more interested in is the, are those orange swaths. Uh, those are corridors that uh, are either currently being or, or are currently being studied for some sort of transit. So um, the one you know, that, that north corridor would be um, representative of the passenger rail planning activities that are going on, um, as similarly out to the, the Hilliard line, and then that other nor um, northern um, on 270 out to the eastern part of our region represents a study ODOT just completed looking at um, connecting the workforce centers of Newark, 
the Aetna and Pataskala areas with the New Albany Business Park and then further west into the uh, central Ohio area. Um, so those are studies that have been going on. We have, they've not been, um, funding has not been identified. And uh, so we, at this time, we don't think they'll actually be built for service by 2050. Um, so the next slide shows um, kind of, so the, the other project types, uh, I've zoomed into Delaware County here. Again, I understand at this level, it's um, not super easy to read, but I do encourage you to, to visit the web map. Um, but really, I want to emphasize here, um, you know, we've got all the different project types listed. Um, I'm here to notify the community that we are looking for feedback. We want to, you know, this is an important plan. We want to make sure that it represents uh, local uh, priorities. And so um, if there's anything on here that you see, um, or maybe that is missing that, you know, you'd want to see on this plan, or if there's anything that is concerning that you're kind of saying, oh, where did this come from? Um, you know, this, this doesn't necessarily represent priorities in Delaware County. We want to hear that too. So uh, we have been working closely with um, the county engineer and his, and his team, as well as um, the city of Delaware, city of Sunbury, and other co local communities within the county as well. So, um, but, um, Yes, just want to emphasize that um, now is the time to provide feedback, and um, yeah, of course, not necessarily at this meeting, <laughs> but um, if you, you can always email me or my team. I've got the information in here. Um, so just a little bit of, so kind of next steps to wrap this up. You know, this is a, about an 18 month process that we go through to develop this plan. We started back in 2022. Um, currently we are, you know, kind of, um, uh, dotting our I's, crossing our T's, we're preparing for the adoption of the plan at our um, Transportation Policy Committee meeting in May. Um, and so we have been, um, if we want to go to the next slide, we've been out uh, visiting um, county commissioners, city councils, village councils, uh, township trustees, um, and we've, we've done over 50 presentations so far between uh, January and, and now. Um, just really doing <coughs> the same thing, notifying that um, we would like your, your input and feedback. Um, the, officially, the public comment period ended March 29th, but again, we've, we've had to, um, it's been hard to squeeze in all these uh, presentations in that time frame. so if you have comments, absolutely, um, please reach out and we will uh, get them incorporated. Um, and again, we are looking to adopt the plan in May. And um, the next slide has my, um, the team that's been out doing these presentations, so, um, Again, you have email addresses and phone numbers here that I encourage you to um, reach out with any uh, questions or comments. And with that, um, I thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any questions if you have them. Well, we'll start with Commissioner Benton who sits on the pharmacy board. Do you have any? <coughs> um, well, thank you for coming. Absolutely. And, and thank you for putting this together. Very, it is very important. I had a couple questions. Uh, obviously, I'm interested in Engineer Bowserman's uh, thoughts on the plan, but what about rail? Yeah, I know we're, we're studying high-speed rail yes. uh, now, and I don't see, I didn't, maybe I missed it, but I didn't see any of that incorporated yeah, so in this plan. That is, what I, we're kind of trying to capture that in that transit map the, because it's passenger rail. So um, this, this plan, it does have to be fiscally constrained of what we think we can build by 2050 based on our kind of current information. And so passenger rail is absolutely, um, you know, it's one of the, the top priorities at MORPC to kind of, you know, we know, uh, we've been partners with the state and multiple states to, um, as recipients of planning dollars to um, identify um, what those corridors look like, what does it take to um, ultimately build passenger, have, bring passenger rail to central Ohio. So those planning activities are absolutely moving forward. I guess at this time, we don't have enough information to say that they'll be constructed by 2050. And so we do update this plan every four years. So ideally, as we move forward in that planning process, we'll be able to capture that um, for construction in the future in a future plan. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I know I'm interested. I think most people here are interested in passenger rail and just how it would work, where it would locate, what, what lines it would use, what, where the stations would be, but I know those yeah. are those are down the road to fund, you know, put those plans together. Yes, and that's kind of the, what, with the, the money that we were awarded, or our state was awarded, um, that those are the questions that are gonna be answered with those planning dollars. So it's really looking at how, how does this work, where are the stations, um, and so that, 
um, will be occurring over you know, this next year. Um, I, th I think uh, Morpsey is looking at putting together a, a committee to kind of, you know, of the communities in, within the area that would be impacted by passenger rail to um, help kind of guide that work. So. Um, one other interchange that I know I've, I've talked about um, and been interested in long range mm -hmm. um, is the something at to the north of 36, 37, maybe at, at 521 or up in Morrow County at 229 or something. And it, I don't see anything on this, and I know it's probably it's probably the same answer. It's probably just way too early to consider putting a interge another interchange on the on the uh, plan at this point. But I, I do see the need 10, 15, 20 years down the road for a, for another interchange that maybe at 521, maybe further north. But. Okay, I will definitely make a note of that, and um, we'll we'll see how that we yeah. can incorporate yeah. that. I know you know we coordinate with ODOT as well. Um, oh sure. And yeah, so so thank you, and I, I we'll we'll take that back. Yeah, I don't know, Engineer Bozerman, any comments? Yeah, I, you want me to come? Sure, to sure. <laughs> you're 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 a little bit involved in this process. A little bit. Maria, thanks for being here. The uh, uh, Morpsey is one of our most valuable partners and uh, appreciate the work that they do in coordinating transportation throughout the region, not just, uh, you know, not just Delaware County and Franklin County. This is a regional uh, effort and you see by the size of the map uh, the area that they have to look at and um, so the work they do is important and uh, there's some evidence of that coordination uh, on the project map, I noted the, uh, our home road corridor project to establish home road east to west as a, uh, as, a as a major uh, route um, ties into Union County's plan to over in the Jerome Village area to come and tie that road into Blaney Road, which is, becomes home road in Union County. So uh, it's good to see uh, different entities planning together and Morpsey is a big part of coordinating those efforts. So, um, the, uh, at the risk of stating the obvious, Morpsey is an important partner because they control a fair amount of federal funds uh, that, uh, that we're eligible for and compete for. And um, uh, metropolitan planning organizations have, a, have attributable funds that come directly to that agency to, dis to uh, disperse. We also apply for funds directly from ODOT for other, in other program areas. We apply to the state in other program areas. Uh, but um, their pot of money is an important pot uh, for us. We've had a couple of uh, um, uh, big impact projects that Morpsey's funded, probably most recently the uh, uh, South Old State widening from two lanes to five lanes from Polaris up to Orange Road. Uh, it was a $15 million um, yeah. uh, grant from uh, through Morsey's attributable funds uh, of our federal highway dollars. So um, the, uh, the discussion in, uh, about, um, about transit is always an important one, uh, but I'd note that, um, you know, there a third of the, about a third of the, uh, the funding uh, program for uh, this period up to 2050 is allocated for transit and it's important. Um, the problem is it's not a problem of the percentages of how that money gets distributed. It's the problem is the pie is not big enough and we find ourselves often competing mm -hmm. uh, for surface transportation, roadway improvement projects with transit because we're both, we're both requesting money from the same pot. And, yeah. Uh, so it's an important thing for us to all remember as we're talking to our state and federal uh, representatives and legislators that um, that we need more funding uh, through those through those state and federal programs, and um, um, it's you know it, it, in a in a perfect world we'd all be rowing together with transit and with our transportation projects, but we but we we find ourselves opposite of each other's interests because of the, just because of the limited funds that are available. So I just bring that up to, sure. um, for just for the purpose of uh, keeping that on our agenda as we talk to the decision makers about funding. So um, the, um, the, other, the other slide I thought was really interesting that probably kind of tells the story of, uh, uh, 
of what we're all faced with is the total 2050 density slide that's on page, I don't know, four or five. Um, has 2050 households on it. Uh, on the left is growth density. On the right, total 2050 density. Um, and you see the uh, how much of Delaware County is uh, shaded um, suburban development at a half to three units per acre uh, through most of the southern part of the county. And you notice most of our neighboring counties, even by 2020, don't have that kind of uh, uh, projected growth in housing so um, it appears to me a lot of the heavy lifting in terms of the housing crisis that we have in in the region is going to be uh, is going to come to bear here in Delaware County we've we've done housing now <laughs> a pretty prolific in a pro prolific way for uh, for the last 20 years or so and so or, or 30 years so that's going to continue and that's an important thing to look at on here and those kind of those kind of changes in uh, our land use um, will continue to mean we need to continue to improve our our infrastructure uh, to meet the demands of that. So it's interesting too the kind of the northern third of Delaware County, you know, by two, 2050 yeah. still is not dense. Yeah. Yes. You know, so the growth is still concentrated, kind yes. of the southern two thirds, half to two thirds. Yeah. So I, I was thinking of this slide when you raised your question about 520, 521 interchange. Uh, that's an interchange that's on our county thoroughfare plan. Yeah. And, uh, but if, if, this, if this land use projection comes, uh, comes true, uh, is, you know, still wouldn't really show a support for an interchange there based on that level of, right. uh, that low density of, right. uh, of development. So um, it, it's, really one of those things we need to keep engaged in this process and as we see things changing, if sewer were to come to that area, if, uh, if there's pressure for other kinds of development along the 71 corridor, we need to jump in and add those kind of things to this, uh, to this plan. So. Yeah, I, looked at it, I look at it as mostly a, a commercial development, yeah. uh, economic development um, growth area, yeah. potentially. Um, one, other, one other thing I thought about, Interesting in your thoughts, um, both Maria and, and Chris, is the Intel-related um, infrastructure, in particular roads. And yeah. I know we've had conversations about building uh, new roads to handle uh, the Intel impact uh, kind of east of 71. Mm -hmm. and, but there aren't really anything on there, and I imagine it's the same answer. We just don't have anything firm at this point to, to point to. I, I think you're aware we have four roundabout projects active sure. in Harlem Township. Right. We're working on um, a, a long county line, three on county line, one on Harlem and Fan at Harlem and Fancher. Right. Um, and um, the, uh, the improvement of the Fancher Road uh, corridor and the Center Village corridor and county line road are all projects that we have on our radar working towards improvements on. First thing is to improve the intersections. We can still get a lot, squeeze a lot of capacity out of two lanes of roadway if the intersections are, are functional. But um, yeah, I think um, the Har Harlem Township's uh, new uh, zoning overlay that they did for their community brings to uh, brings to the forefront the need for other new roadway uh, segments in this very in the southern part of the township, particularly. Mm -hmm. And um, so those are certainly on our radar. Um, and um, the, fun, it, the, the funding that's happened today on those roundabout projects has come from a direct um, allocation from the governor for Intel-related projects that he made available to local governments. And we're very grateful for that. So that would not have come through Morpsey's attributable mm -hmm. funds. Okay. Uh, but. Um, that may be why it's not it's not shown on the map. I have a couple of comments. Um, I I may sound negative. Let's call it an observation. Uh, to Chris's point, we talk about transit and this limited pie. My fear is I probably feel a little differently on rail than mass transit and some other people. It needs to pass the same needs benefit test that we. And I don't think that I think it caused so much in the feel good. 
And if they can't pass that test, then I think those dollars are better spent elsewhere. Uh, and I noticed one comment, uh, affordability and resilience of regional energy supplies. We have seen cost of energy double in gasoline over this last four years. We're going in the other direction. We're not getting more affordable, we're getting more expensive. And uh, that sounds good on paper, but the reality is decisions we're making currently at the federal level is sending us in the wrong direction, in my opinion. Observations. Uh, I used to be a board member. Uh, I think we got to spend these dollars well, and uh, we got to make sure we have the vision to uh, make sure we get the most bang for our buck. And I sometimes fear that we get caught up in utopian ideas that may take us off that target. Observation, not negative. So, and that, I'll close with that. Commissioner Lewis, you have anything? No. Okay. Maria, you were going to comment? Well, I was going to. Uh comment on the, your Intel comment. I just wanted to um, indicate some activities that MORPC uh, you, um, we have done and we'll see in the future. Um, so the land use and, and the forecasting that you see does kind of include, you know, at the time, um, our, you know, including um, the different uh, changes that, like you mentioned, Harlem Township, um, you know, a lot of the um, initial reactions um, and responses, I should say, to the Intel development as far as land use planning. So that is incorporated in what you see here. And then I just wanted to mention there's, um, you know, ODOT has led, as, as the engineer mentioned, um, a lot of plan a lot of activities as far as in identifying investment into kind of the major system. But what we have seen is, you know, of sir, you know, investment, investing in 161 and the state facilities that are serving you know, the, the site directly, yes, that is needed, but there are a lot of other needs on local roads and some roads that uh, maybe um, until now or until, uh, were, you know, county roads that, you know, are two-lane roads that, um, you know, are, are needing improvement, but maybe aren't even eligible for federal dollars. And so um, one thing, Morpsy, we did lead a process and we did uh, coordinate with uh, Rob Briley in your office to identify what those immediate um, roadways might be that, okay, we got to get these um, federal aid eligible and go, so we kind of led a process to identify what, um, and getting those federal aid eligible based on some transportation needs. Um, and then, so ODOT is also leading a, they have a 10 minute uh, travel time ring uh, study group, and then a 20 minute, and then actually Morpsy has, um, is kicking off uh, this year what we're calling the 40 minute travel time uh, ring of communities. So we will be bringing together um, including Delaware County um, stakeholders to um, just to coordinate specifically on those local uh, improvements that are needed and the impacts and just um, as an opportunity to um, you know like you said mention some of those cross county connections and um, so you uh, you will be hearing more about that in the future um, as we kind of get this kicked off um, but it is you, you bring up a, a really good point um, but and just to kind of finish that thought and bring it full circle. Um, we do this pl this process every four years. So while you know we, we've been forecasting growth, and I, you guys know this, you know, you've been forecasting growth in, in Delaware County for many years. And so while um, while we didn't know Intel exactly was gonna, you know, that major develop development or employer was gonna locate in that spot exactly, um, in overall terms of um, a regional forecast, you know, we are, because we have this planning process in place and we are looking at this every four years, um, we feel like um, we were kind of able to um, pivot a little bit, but um, kind of absorb that into our regular planning process. And, um, you know, it wasn't too much of a, um, we didn't have to pivot too much, I should say. So, um, but it's, that's why it's important that we do, um, you know, a continuous planning process. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I did just have one thing, okay. one, one question, um, and you outlined the timetable, and then it's like it's May, right, right. almost. So what's the next step then as far as getting this ready to go in May? Uh, the next step will be, so we, we have a draft plan on our website now. So if you visit the website, you can okay. see the, the map um, as well as um, nine different chapters of you know, a documentation of our entire process, much more detailed than I, you know, okay. you, you would care to hear today. Sure. Um, and so uh, we have um, our, our, we have our April uh, commission meeting coming up, um, and there'll be, you know, kind of a last update, um, kind of talk about what the, what the results of what kind of public comments we have heard, 
you know, any uh, major changes maybe as a, as a result of those. Um, but then in, on May 9th, I think is the, the May commission meeting where okay. we would uh, bring this for adoption by our transportation okay. policy committee. And so, um, as I mentioned, <clears throat> the, you know, we, the public comment period did end, but uh, we are always taking public comments. And so we do, uh, of course, want to incorporate any comments you might have, and so there still is time. Sure. Okay. Um, so the next step okay. would be, yeah, please provide any feedback, and um, and then really it is the plan adoption. Okay. And okay. then and then we do monitor the plan, so we have performance measures, and we'll be monitoring as projects get built um, how we are uh, meeting those and um, advancing towards those goals that we identified. Okay. Okay. And thank you for yes. coming. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Thanks, Thanks, Maria. Maria. Uh, they have one more piece of business. Would you take care? Of? We do have one item for other business. Resolution number 24-273 in the matter of approving a supplemental appropriation. So moved. Second. Motion made and seconded. Go ahead. Good morning, Commissioners. Karen First, Fiscal Manager. This appropriation increase is attributed to a consulting agreement for the Social Services Building on the Bixby campus, and that agreement should be coming to you next week. Yeah, and I asked a question this morning. I said North Campus. I call it Bix Bixby Campus. So we, it, we probably have to be called it the same thing and all well, of our stuff. So, but you did clarify that. Yes, and the, the other, yes. when we made this org key years ago, we hadn't named it the Bixby Campus yet. So that's why we just had followed what the Career Center had. Okay. Any questions or comments? Call for vote. Vote on motion 24 273. Mr. Merrill? Aye. Mr. Benton? Aye. Mrs. Lewis? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Uh, uh, anything from our administrator? Not today. Don? No. Eric? Okay, thank you. Uh, Commissioner Ben? Um, just a couple things. We do have, uh, speaking of Morphsey, we have the executive committee meeting this afternoon and um, SEBCO annual meeting tomorrow morning. And Jim Tressel is the speaker. Oh, is he? Yeah. At uh, the annual meeting tomorrow. So that, that uh, I'm sure that'll be, that'll be well received. Um, we went to actually Commissioner Merrill and I did a couple things the last couple days, the Ohio Wesleyan Library Plus discussion, where Ohio Wesleyan is looking at its um, library of the future and how they want to do that in that whole area and what they want to incorporate and so on. So it was a very interesting discussion. They're really engaging the community in a big way because they, they want to share their facilities, their activities, you know, with the community and kind of a vision beyond just the library. Right. Oh, right. That was the yeah, that was the big point was it's not just the library, it's it's performing arts, it's possibly a hotel, you know, mm -hmm. hospitality management, yeah. um, music, fine arts. I mean it's 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 and again that whole area with the library, with the current library and how that looks. So again, good discussion, long term plan lots of funding needs um, for, for all these different projects. But, and then we went to the Powell State of the County, or State of the City, last night, and they did a nice job. They did a real nice job. They're doing very well. They've got, uh, they're in good shape financially. They're AAA rated. That oh, was, nice. Yeah, yeah, that was, I didn't know that. So that was, that's certainly the best they can, they yes. can achieve, and congratulations to them. Got good leadership in place, and um, you know, they're, Doing well, so it was, it was a nice presentation at the zoo. So, Chris Lewis, I went. <coughs> pardon me. Went to our regional opioid meeting uh, as a representative for the first time. Uh, took over from uh, uh, Commissioner Merrill, who's done a fine job, representative, for the past two years. Thought it was time to pass the baton to me. And, and it's in good hands. Uh, which I, it's in good hands, you're right. I mean, that's, I've done a lot of work in justice and public safety, so i um, very interested in uh, moving the grant, um, the grant so long. It looks as though that might be finally moving, and um, our, uh, our council and uh, deputy administrator also talked about what what was presented this morning as far as uh, our, what, what we're gonna be doing uh, with, with, or presenting to, to this board that, that uh, Chief Fischel uh, presented to today. So it was an interesting meeting and um, glad to be on the board. Uh, I, I won't take, you know, Monday's a big day, so I guess I'll let you talk about that. Go ahead if you want. Well, I, I did want to add that I, I just heard on the news there's this place called Forest 
Ohio, <laughs> in which they have a four minute uh, blackout. So are you going there? Well, I think someone else here knows about that. Could you enlighten us just a little bit on that? What's, what's, what's sure. happening? <laughs> are you being put on the spot or are you prepared for this? I had no idea. <laughs> so Eric Hostetler again, Forest is my hometown. Uh, when I was growing up, it was about 1,600 people. I think they're about 1,300 now. But my parents still live there, and the center of the path of totality for the eclipse is, oh, maybe quarter mile, half mile from my parents' house. So my, uh, my sister and her family are coming. Um, my family will be there, including my brother, who we never see. Um, <laughs> so we'll all be there because this month is also my parents' 50th anniversary, so we're kind of... Even if the eclipse doesn't pan out due to weather, we're still yeah, celebrating here. that. So, um, but yeah, that, that little town has sent out a lot of papers to their residents to prepare for the worst. Um, but they're, they're very excited. Wow, what do you think's going to happen? What do I think's going to happen? Yeah. But, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All these people, boy, I mean, thousands. Jam yeah, so this is a town that has one stoplight has one gas station, used to have two. When I was a kid, there were two. Um, doesn't really even have a grocery store anymore. Oh my um, gosh. Has two restaurants, one of which is the Dairy Barn. I mean, it's, so it's. <laughs> I see people are gonna get there the day before, or? No, I mean, we, don't, we know all the back ways to get there, okay. so <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be fine. But yeah, they're, I think they're looking forward to it, but a lot of people are worried. So uh -huh. Uh -huh. we'll just see how it goes. I can't imagine, even though, they are going to have, uh, there are a lot of other places along the path of totality that are much more well equipped to handle to a large influx of people. Uh -huh. So hopefully Forrest doesn't get bombarded. But oh, All right. I get, you've got to give us then, you know, the after. The, sure. Yeah. The, the after, action, after report. action report. Exactly. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> thank you. That's, That's all I had. Uh, I had two things on here, <laughs> Ovo Library and the uh, meeting we had and the PAL State of the City, and uh, Mr. Benton took care of both of those. I will just add this. Of course, so we're having a Zoom meeting next week. Uh, we had one, uh, one of our board members uh, was unsuccessful in the March primary, another in retiree, so we have a couple of course of positions we're going to be having to talk about filling in the short, in their near future. So other than that, I don't really have anything else. And uh, I think we had a very, very good meeting today. Yeah, it was and a lot so of fun. So really, uh, it's heartwarming to see all the great things that we're doing in our county and the good people and uh, the comments Brent made about the, this team. Obviously, he was very emotional. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen him. He's usually pretty stoic. Yeah, yeah. And but this was something that was close to him, obviously. And uh, uh, but, but but beyond that, all the other things are going on in our great county. So with that, I do know we have need for executive session. Resolution number two four two seven four in the matter of adjourning into executive session for consideration of employment of a public employee or public official and for collective bargaining and for pending or imminent litigation. So moved. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion. Vote. Vote on motion resolution number 24-274. Mr. Benton. Aye. Mr. Merrill. Aye. Mrs. Lewis. Aye. With that, we're now in executive session. Should we